Hey, hello. Oh, right. So we are gonna talk about camera gear, uh, something that everybody loves, right? Uh, well, first of all, I apologize for the lining here. Uh, this is the best I can do. I don't have a studio or anything. Actually, you wouldn't wanna see the rest of the apartment right now. It's quite a mess. But I, I found this little corner here that is kind of okay. Yeah, second, uh, I'm wearing this hat because my hair is kinda crazy. It's not because I usually wear winter hats at home because I don't do that. And third, the dog is just walking around, so hopefully she doesn't make too much noise. But anyway, I've been shooting medium format film with the Bronica for the last five months, and I've gone to, I would say, very different places. I've shot in very different conditions, and I've been adding more and more stuff to my kit. And I think that right now I can say with some confidence I'm pretty happy with the gear that I have. So I thought that it would be useful or it could be useful for someone else out there to see what I use and maybe I have something uh, that helps me and you didn't even know that was a thing. And the same way I would ask you to tell me if you have something in your kit that I should definitely add to mine because I'm always open to buy more stuff, that's for sure. So of course, the first thing to talk about it's about the camera bag this is uh, this little guy here was my first dedicated camera bag before this i was using just backpacks or i would just throw in the camera i'm talking about the digital camera of course uh, anywhere i could when i bought the a6000 it was my first interchangeable lens camera and i needed a bag for all those lenses and for the camera so i bought this one it's a low pro and I loved, I absolutely loved using this thing. But of course, this is not big enough, not at all, for the Bronica. So we are gonna have to move to the floor to show you. Okay, so this is the bigger guy here. As I said, I loved the other bag so much that I went with the Low Pro again. This is the Low Pro Pro Tactic or 50W or something like that. I'll leave links in the description to everything here. It's pretty solid. It's a little bit dirty from this past two days trip to Central Oregon. But yeah, like this small one, it has a raincoat here. There you go, that you can put on over the backpack. I usually attach my tripod here and I have on these side pockets something i don't have anything here right now but i usually have like cloths like this to clean the stuff but yeah they are pretty small one cool feature is like you can access uh, the inside of the bag from the sides i don't usually use it uh, i don't use it that way i just take it off my back and put it on the ground and access everything inside from here because it opens from the back and that is very nice i really like that let's get into the main section or main part of the this bag so this that you are seeing right now it would be like my typical setup for a trip in these little pockets i have a lot of tiny stuff like external batteries like this one from amazon i have batteries for the digital camera here i have cleaning stuff like the cleaning wipes and some microfiber cloths. I don't usually use them, I just use my t-shirt. Maybe I should use them more often, but map of Oregon and Washington, a pencil to take notes. This is very important because you never think of this when you're shooting a film camera, but I have uh, spare batteries for the Bronica. They last forever. I've been using the camera for as I said, five months and I, I'm still using the original batteries. But someday you will need them and you better have them with you if you are out in the middle of nowhere. So I have them with me. There is room here for a laptop, but I don't usually bring it here. I have a separate backpack for that because I have the charger plus hard drives. I can't fit everything here. Let's start with these two little guys here. This is the Holga, as you know, I use a Holga too. I shoot it every once in a while, just for those special shots. 
and yeah it doesn't require anything like batteries or more lenses or anything it's just the camera itself i'll be talking more about the whole gun soon i want to do like a proper review on what i think about it i have this other camera here this is a slr it's a minolta xgm i don't usually shoot 35 but a russian company a russian film company sent me uh, some film to test so I've been using it. I'll be talking about that film soon too uh, But yeah for now, I'll just put it aside So now getting to the Bronicky stuff First yeah, you can see I have a cable release here kind of important for long exposures and Some low light shots, but it's broken as you can see This is the second one that I break. I I've already tried two different brands so if you know a good cable release that is gonna last and it's not $200, please let me know because I know what to do. Uh, okay, I have this little rocket uh, air blowing thing. I use it mostly to clean the sensor of the video camera when, when you change uh, lenses on these mirrorless, mirrorless cameras. Uh, they get pretty dusty, pretty easy. This bag came with a backpack and I'm using it to store my film here. I use it to store the exposed film too, like this one that I took yesterday. I have a spare spools too. You never know when they're gonna break and I don't wanna waste one roll of film on the field just to keep shooting. Here I have my color black and white filters. This box is kind of breaking, falling apart. And yeah, I'm going to be talking about these filters more too in the future because I really have some things to say about them. Uh, they are red, orange, yellow and blue. And I, I've used them quite a lot lately and yeah, I'll be talking about them soon. So, more about filters. Uh, this is the pouch that came with the holder, the Lee filters holder. So this is an adapter, you screw this on the lens and then you mount the holder, something like that. And you put the ND filters here. For the ND filters themselves, I started with one, I, I ended up like getting all of them. I started with the super stopper, that is 15 uh, stop ND filter. And I use this a lot during the day, uh, at daylight, because it's uh, to take long exposures when it's pretty bright outside. Then I started taking long exposures at sunrise and sunset, so I was in need of uh, something that it was not 15, but something uh, like this one, like the big stopper that is only, only just a 10 stop ND filter. But then, I shot that long exposure of the moon and I used this big stopper, but I realized that it was too much for those situations too. So I got the little stopper that is a six, uh, six stop uh, ND filter. So I have them all now. I use them all. I've used the little stopper this weekend too, or this uh, past two days, sorry. So this is my set of ND filters. They are here in their original boxes. I believe that they are very well protected here. So. Okay, have to change the battery of the video camera. All right, so now uh, for the Bronica equipment uh, itself. First of all, I think I'm gonna start with this. I have a extra or a spur uh, film back. Why do I have two film backs? That's a good question. There are many reasons. One of them is because that allows me to have different speeds. Like I can be, I might be shooting uh, HP5 here at 1600, I might have be shooting HP5 at 400 the other back. At the end of the day, I shoot mostly at uh, 800 all the time, uh, no matter if I'm shooting Tri-X or HP5. I like the look, it gives me enough speed for even low light situations. But having two film backs uh, allows me to shoot at different speeds or even have color film in one of them and black and white in the other. In the other one, uh, I don't shoot any color, so it's not something that I that I do, but I could if I wanted to. Another reason to have two film bags, and this one is actually a good reason for me to to have two, is that I have a film loaded in one of them, so it's here. When I'm done with this one, I can quickly load 
this other back uh, and keep shooting. It's not about shooting a lot of uh, pictures in a row or that my shots are pretty critical time-wise, but it's more about it might be raining outside, it might be pretty windy, I might be on the beach. I don't want to be messing with opening the film back and loading film and taking this uh, the exposed film and putting it in the backpack. So what I do is I finish this one, I take it off here, put it here, load it the new one and keep shooting. And then once I'm back in the car or in better conditions, I just take the exposed film from here, load new film, so it's always ready there to go. Now for the camera and the lenses. The camera came with another finder. Actually, let me show you. See, it came with this one. It's a prism finder. It's like more like a regular traditional DSLR or regular camera. So the main problem for me with this is like it makes the camera much bigger. And I actually really enjoy using the waist level finder a lot. Absolutely recommend getting one of these. As you can see, the camera is much, much smaller. So this is my other film back. Of course, nothing to say here. Uh, I have this quick release plate for the tripod, so it's always there. Right now I have this lens attached. This is one of my favorite lenses for the Bronica. It's the 150 millimeter. It's actually the most common one, so it's pretty cheap and easy to find. I think I got it for a hundred bucks. I don't remember. But yeah, it's one of my favorite lenses by far. Uh, it's pretty sharp and it goes all the way from f4 to f32 so it's not a fast lens but it's fast enough for me so yeah this is the lens that lives in this camera i would say 60 70 percent of the time moving on to more lenses i have this wide angle lens this is a 20 28 no sorry 50 50 millimeter but it's 28 equivalent in 35 so this is the lens that I dropped the other day at Mount St. Helens and as you can see it's, it's perfectly fine. It doesn't have a scratch. They are built like tanks, that's for sure. So this one goes from f3.5, so it's a little bit faster than the other one, but not by much. It's like a third of a stop or something like that, to f22. I like this lens, it's sharp too, but it's really, really wide for this camera to the point where it already distorts a little bit. I think uh, it's my second most used lens after the 150. The next one is a recent uh, acquisition of mine, it's the 80 millimeter. 80 millimeter. Uh, this is what it's called a normal lens or a normal uh, focal length because it's a 40 45 millimeter equivalent in 35. This one goes from 2.8, so it's uh, one stop uh, faster than the 150 and two thirds of a stop faster than the 50. And it goes to f22. I used it these past two days for the first time, so I still have to see. Uh, photos from this lens, but uh, yeah, looks pretty sharp too. The good thing about this lens is uh, really, really small compared to the other ones, and it's really light. So my initial idea with uh, these three lenses was to have a range that uh, I was used to uh, in 35. I I used to have a 24 to 70 lens on my Sony camera. So this way I have 28, uh, 42, 80. They are the more or less the most common focal lens. And I think that this is a pretty common setup for, for, for the Bronica SQI uh, as well. The last lens, this big guy right here. If you follow my photography, you know I like to take uh, close up of mountains and far away landscapes and whatnot. So I wanted something to have a farther reach than the 150. So I got this 250 millimeter lens. Uh, this is a 130 millimeter equi equivalent. And this goes from f5.6, so it's much slower than the other lenses, to all the way to f45. I don't use this lens too often, but when I do, I actually like the results of it a lot. Um, 
that's all I had to show you, I believe. This is all my film gear that I bring with me all the time. So I'm planning on making a lot more videos about film photography, about the Bronica and about uh, my experience and my journey with uh, this camera, about all I've learned and yeah, things that I would have loved to know when I started using this camera. I already have a few ideas about what to talk next, but if you guys have any questions, ideas, suggestions, uh, special requests or anything, please let me know, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you for sure. And that's all for today. Thank you so much again and see you in the next one.